Welcome to another sensory percussion tutorial. In this video, I wanted to address the new Live 11 feature, which is comping. If you're familiar with recording audio in a different DAW, you're probably very familiar with this concept already. It's a really nice way to just take several passes at a recording and then splice together the best take. Live 11 introducing comping is excellent because now that means there's a lot of different ways we can apply comping to sensory percussion. Comping is a little more straightforward when you're just dealing with one track. So for anyone that's not familiar with the concept of comping, I'm going to start out with the most basic demonstration I could, which would be to just make an audio track that receives output from sensory percussion, just the whole thing, post mixer. And sensory percussion, I just have a pretty simple setup with kick, snare, and then cycle hi-hat sounds. Because I'm using sensory percussion as a plugin within Ableton, I just made this track to receive all the audio from the plugin. It can ignore all the other tracks for now. The way comping works is if I have a loop, let's just do one bar. And I'm recording my beat. And it loops it's going to record over it, but don't worry, it's not destructively recording over it. So let's, let's play a few versions of this beat. All right, so I can right click on the track, select show take lanes or handy keyboard shortcut command option u on a mac that would be Control alt u on a pc i can just toggle back and forth with that keyboard shortcut to show all the takes pretty cool i would definitely recommend deactivating all the sensor audio because what's happening is if i play this let's just pick one hearing some rad flanger flammy phaser stuff because we're literally the sensor audio i recorded this is the beautiful sound of a mesh drum head and that is being routed into the plugin which in turn is triggering all the sounds in real time it's as if i was playing sensory percussion but in this case we already recorded audio to comp down here so for the sake of this example i'm just going to scrap that sensor audio so now we're just dealing with good old-fashioned audio nice i can select different takes but where this gets really powerful is i could select different parts of different takes i do recommend turning off the grid so you can get more particular with your selections so right now i'm on take six let's say i wanted this beat of take five i just select it and hit enter i can pick and choose which parts of which takes i want to keep pretty rad do something like that okay so you can get the idea totally get lost in this be careful if this is just simply too much you can fold it back up and now you can work with that composite audio join the whole thing mangle Cool. Let's move on to another way of comping with sensory percussion that's a little more uh, production friendly. Usually when you record drums, you would have a bunch of different mics. When you comp, you still want to be able to treat each mic differently. We can do that by just taking audio output from individual drums. So before we had just an audio track that was receiving post mixer from the plugin. But here I have just one track for each drum. I could just go ahead and record arm all of those. And let's record another loop. Same setup and everything. Cool. I'm just going to deactivate sensor audio so we're not in phasey zone. I can just select all of these tracks, right click show take lanes and there you go whoa total information overkill we got like what nine takes although the first two are silent having each drum or sound on a separate channel gives us a lot more freedom in how we process this after the fact 
for instance, we might want to use the kick as a sidechain source for something, but you might not want to do that with the snare. Having them on separate tracks makes it really easy to do whatever you need to do. If I make a comp edit on one track, it's not going to be reflected on the other tracks. If we were in acoustic drum world, this would be a huge problem because the overall drum sound is a combination of all the different mics working together. If all of a sudden the kick is off on its own, it's getting bleed from a different take for the snare and the overheads and whatever else you have going. You can get away with this in digital world more so, but most of the time I would prefer to keep all of the drums together. So whatever comp edits I make are at least going to be consistent with whatever else I was doing on the rest of the kit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all, right click, link tracks. Now, whatever I do on one track, will be mirrored on all the other tracks. Let's start making some comps. Okay, cool. Because we're dealing with good old fashioned audio, it's possible to make comps that would slice a transient. I could make this cut right in the middle of the transient of that snare. And you know, it depends on how experimental you want to get. That could be cool. It's just something to keep in mind when you use this approach. You could get creative with it, embrace that limitation, and maybe instead of making a hard cut here, I'm going to fade into this nice little brush. It's almost like a, a little more ghost strokey, as opposed to... Anyway, it's super subtle, but devil's in the details, or the vibe is in the details. So this is probably the most traditional drum comp approach you could do with sensory percussion, grouped resulting audio comp. These are just audio files. They don't know anything about sensory percussion. If we wanted to get even crazier, we have another option at our disposal. Instead of comping the audio that comes after this plugin, we can comp the sensor audio that is feeding sensory percussion. So I'm going to go ahead and link these just because that's my preference. Again, this is just the audio that's coming off of the sensors and feeding sensory percussion. I could go into the plugin and make any changes I want within the plugin about how it's going to respond to the sensor audio. I could swap samples, change parameters. Kind of makes all the hi-hats sound like a shaker. That's pretty cool. Another thing I can do with this setup that I particularly enjoy is making edits to the audio that changes how it's going to quote unquote play sensory percussion. So with the snare drum, I have three different samples that are selected via the control box and a velocity controller. So soft notes would play this brush thing, medium would play that, and louder ones would play that. In this loop that I comp together, I really wish this transient right here was hitting the harder sample. And I'm sure that in one of these other takes, it did do that. But for the sake of illustration, what I could do is just crank up the gain on this one hit and see if that does the trick oh it did it so let's just loop this for illustration that's the middle velocity and that's the soft velocity that's pretty cool maybe we'll make these a little softer So that is incredibly flexible. I am particularly excited about this approach when using sensory percussion to do something melodic. So I have this set up here using a velocity controller with two mappings to control the pitch of two samplers. 
one on the center and one on the edge. I really love doing this kind of thing with sensory percussion. It's a really interesting way to generate a melody. But let's be honest, it's really hard to do something specific. But with comping, what I can do is have several goes at it and then tailor the melody to what I want it to be. It's an interesting creative process to make melodies that I probably would not have made any other way. So this setup has that melodic thing going on this drum and just a kick and some samples on the other drums. So let's record, let's go four bar loop. So I'm gonna turn my grid off for future comps. Let's see what we can do. Okay, in this case, because the kick and snare are a pretty separate thing, what I'm going to do is actually unlink them, make sure that beat is what I want it to be, which I think I already got. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Sweet. So now I can just comp the melody. So we're just dealing with these tracks. Let's see what we got. So I think at this point I've dealt with enough of the the other takes. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide those and now just work with this audio to get the melody where I want it to be. And I could move these clips around. I could scale them up or down to trigger different pitches since I'm using velocity for pitch. Let's just see where this ends up. All right, that was quite the adventure. Let's move on. So we just talked about using sensor audio before it hits sensory percussion. And we already talked about using audio that comes after the sensory percussion. And the last workflow that we can work with is just using MIDI. Keeping it simple with the kick snare, got a little controller action. And then instead of doing a hi-hat, I'm changing it up. And we got some nice Debussy chords going on. Just love that. So we can comp with MIDI as well. Same workflow. I'll just play something. So if I look at this MIDI track, this is the output from sensory percussion. Just a bunch of MIDI notes. We can show the take lanes and now see, just like we had with all the different versions of audio, we have different versions of MIDI that we can look at. And we can comp them in the exact same way where it'll swap it out for that MIDI region. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Obviously this is the way to go if you are using sensory percussion to play something via MIDI, whether it be a drum rack or something melodic. But to me, the huge advantage this workflow has is just visually you can see everything in one place. I can look at this and have a rough idea of what the contents are without having to fill up the entire screen with tiny little audio tracks. I can even select multiple MIDI regions and see here at the top of the rack it's actually putting both takes on the piano roll and i can just look at one or the other on top with the selection that's just a nice view a different option for catching the vibe so let's just comp away i don't think i need to do anything too crazy with this and again need to get rid of that sensor audio i'm just going to delete it be committal hold it up Join them, Command J. Now look how simple this is. Just one MIDI clip for everything that's going on here. So if you remember, I briefly mentioned that I was using some controllers to do some stuff. 
was using velocity to change the pitch of the chord that's played here. That is CC1, and I was using CC2 to do some stuff to the snare. So with all of that comping I did, I was actually comping the CC messages as well. So that was my one buzz that flipped a speed controller up. And then much more interesting to look at would be the CC1 that's controlling the chord. So if I wanted to mess with the melody, it's as simple as just changing this CC envelope. Pretty staggering flexibility here. So hopefully this video helped break the ice with how to comp with sensory percussion. It's a super valuable tool for capturing all your crazy ideas with sensory percussion and expressing yourself in a crazy format. And don't forget to have fun.